you know, for those of you that are tuning in for the first time to True Insights Radio with Joe Vikaskis, I'm, I'm an intuitive channeler, and each week I share messages from spirit for inspiration, empowerment, and transformation. And in particular this week, you know, what came through is I want to share with all of you the, the key ingredients to manifesting anything. All right. And, and really this came about because, you know, on my own journey, uh, just where life has taken me, it's, it's been really interesting what's, what's been coming up. And, you know, when it comes to manifesting, it's always fun when these things manifest out of the blue, or maybe it's that weird phone call that you weren't expecting, but when it does come, it's like, oh my gosh, where did that come from? or even just someone connecting with you. And in my case, you know, some people have been connecting me from Facebook or from my book or just out of the blue, like, hey, Joe, you know, I I saw your website. I I just want to work with you. And, you know, all these unexpected things, right? And it got me thinking about the the energy around this, all right? So what's, what's the energy around this whole act of manifesting. And so this has actually been a a few weeks in the making and in my journey to just exploring this energy, you know, I, I taught this six chakra class the other night and, you know, the six chakra is all about the pineal gland and seeing things clairvoyantly. And what came up during that particular class was just how the pineal gland and and seeing things into form, you know, what starts off as an intention and then actually having it manifest into form, in other words, you know, into this 3D reality. It was that class that, you know, I was like, wow, there's there's two points there, right? There's what you see and you manifest versus, okay, there's something that came into form. Right, and then along the way, I also ran across this book. Great book, um, by the way. If y'all are interested in reading it, it's um, called "Becoming Supernatural" by uh, Joe Dis- Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, and you know, I've heard some of some of his, his work before. You know, the movie "What the Bleep," um, but yeah, there's a lot of what he says in his book that that kind of validated what I went through in my own life or have been going through in my own life, and so. You know, and, and then just in some of the classes I teach, you know, there's this whole concept of mock-ups. And the concept of a mock-up is that, you know, for, for example, you might have an a artist, right? And let's say, for example, he has a wall he wants to draw this big mural on. Well, before he actually draws on the, mo- on the mural, draw this mural on the wall, what he wants to do first is he, he wants to draw it maybe on a little piece of paper, the mock-up of it. And, you know, energetically, when, when you show the universe what you actually want, right, just like this mock-up of what you actually want to draw on the wall, then it energetically becomes this template, right? So, you know, I've been teaching mock-ups, especially at the school I've been teaching at. I've been teaching that for years. And, you know, in this show, I'm going to share some stories of some mock-ups that, actually came into fruition and and so this whole idea of manifesting right Um, this is what came through for me to share with everyone today on today's show and again i'm calling this show the the key ingredients to manifesting anything so speaking of ingredients right the first ingredient if you will are are just the thoughts right so thoughts come and go Right? Do you get the energy of that? Like you could think of, oh, I got to do my hair today, or what do I eat for lunch after this show? Or, you know, my, my client, right? Those are our thoughts. They're all random thoughts. And we spend each day, we're just thinking and thinking and thinking. And, you know, not really much energy goes into that other than, okay, it's just a thought. Now, Earlier this year, I, I did a, a show on on the law of attraction, the pitfalls of the law of attraction. And 
it's funny because you know there's there's that movie um the secret and with that movie on the secret you know they they covered the law of attraction and and the whole theory of the law of attraction is you know the majority of your thoughts are what you're going to manifest and so you know a lot of people after watching that movie they they decided okay i'm just going to think positive thoughts all the time positive thoughts positive thoughts so you know if you're someone like i want a new relationship so okay new relationship new relationship great relationship loving relationship right or if you wanted that new job you know there's there were a bunch of people that were like okay i'm going to get the job of my dreams or or i'm going to be a millionaire i'm going to be a millionaire millionaire and so you know all that thinking and thinking you know that's great right however you know what what hap- what came about as a result you know of all these people thinking and thinking was <laughs> there's actually a lot of disappointment right because you know a lot of people didn't get that dream relationship a lot of people didn't get that million million dollar job right they didn't get their dream career didn't get their dream home or their dream car and you know quick story like i i have a friend and you know I asked her one time, I said, hey, you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on relationships? And she's like, you know, I thought about it. I think about being in a relationship all the time. And it's funny because what's, what's, um, what stuck out for me about that conversation was she was like, yeah, I want this relationship. And, you know, I thought about it and I wouldn't mind being in the relationship. <laughs> I was like, you wouldn't mind. That's kind of a funny energy to it. She goes, no, I wouldn't mind. I, you know, just when I think about it, I wouldn't mind. Anyway, there she was thinking about it, thinking about it. And, you know, this, this, these thoughts of, ah, I wouldn't mind, right? And just like all these people that were entertaining this whole thought of the law of attraction, you know, did she get into a relationship? Oh. The answer is no, (laughs) she didn't get in the relationship. And, you know, speaking of, I I have another friend and, you know, things have happened in her life and, you know, she's wondering, you know, what's going wrong? How come I'm always in these kind of dead end jobs that I don't enjoy and what's up with that? Right. And so she's thinking about it, just thinking, thinking, thinking. And so, you know, when it comes to the ingredients, right, just going back to the, the ingredients of, what, what's key to manifesting anything? Yes, it's true. You need to have a, a clear mental picture, right? You do need to imagine what it is that you actually want. However, as you can see that, you know, not even though there's, there's the mental pictures, the imagining, the thinking about it, while that's important because all these people didn't manifest what they actually wanted, then it it stands to reason that, okay, there has to be something else other than thoughts. Which, by the way, you know, what, what ended up happening with all these people that didn't actually manifest what they wanted, what ended up happening is that a lot of them just ended up getting really frustrated. All right? And, you know, frustration is an emotion all right you know, get you know get that frustration is actually an emotion and so when it comes to these people that okay they had this thought but they coupled it with some emotion right ah oh, this is not working i'm frustrated well guess what ended up happening they started they had these thoughts of like this is what i want but because it got frustrating, because it wasn't working, then that's the new thought that got introduced into there. All right, so to, just to break that down a little bit, there is the thought, all right, I want a new job, I want a new job, but it didn't happen, so you ended up getting frustrated a little bit, so that's an emotion, which led to these new thoughts of, well, no, I'm just a failure, no, it won't work for me anyway. Or it could be something like, ah, who am I? I tried and tried, but, you know, it's, it's whatever I try, whatever I do, it's, nothing's going to work, right? And that leads to even more emotion, more frustration around that. 
All right. Well, yeah, I just want to tell a quick story about my own um, my own entrepreneurial journey here. And that is when it comes to my entrepreneurial journey. And I've sh I've shared my story on other shows. And as embarrassing as it is sometimes to just share your own story, it, it's real, right? And for me, I, I've I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember, even into my teens. And it wasn't even about the money. It was more about like the, the freedom of it all. And, and I remember one night, uh, this was like way back in the eighties or something like that. And I was maybe 14, 15. And I remember watching this late night infomercial and on this late night infomercial was this, this kid riding, literally riding his bike around like this rich neighborhood and, and I was like, what's he doing in that rich neighborhood, riding his bike? And turns out he, they, they depicted him as this house flipper, right? And so here he is scouting on his bike and he wanted to flip these, or he's, he's a, a successful house flipper apparently. Um, and they show him from riding his bike to actually flipping this house. And then next thing you know, he's, He's no longer, you know, really riding his bike like he, they show him as like this really successful kind of house flipper, entrepreneur, real estate investor. And so there I was, I was watching this light night infomercial and, and it's so funny because I was like, okay, I can, I can do that. I can be like that. And, you know, that planted the seed that, okay, maybe I could. One day when I make enough money, I'm going to buy that course, right? And so guess what I did? Maybe two years later when I was maybe 16 or 17, right about, um, I went through the course and I remember getting to a point in the course, right? And they didn't explain this in the infomercial that you actually have to pick up the phone and actually call someone. <laughs> and so I remember, you know, going, getting to that point in the course, just like, okay, get these old, um, their MLSs or just these old listings, call people, um, and then, you know, just give them that offer, right? Give them that offer of, well, I know you're behind on your payments, you know, I can help you, blah, 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 with this house flipping magic. However, you know, when I got to that point, right, of having to actually pick up the phone and actually have to call someone, that's where my own doubts started to come in, all right? So the thought, right, just breaking this down, the thought is like, oh, I could become this house, this rich uh, house flipper, real estate investor kid. Just like I saw on the radio, uh, saw on the uh, TV infomercial. However, when it came down to it, especially that one step of having to actually pick up the phone, that emotion of doubt came in. Right, and I was young back then. I didn't know any better. I was like, uh, you know, this won't. This is not for me. Uh, I'll, I'll try something else on my entrepreneurial journey. Right. And so I, I uh, went into internet, um, how to build websites for people, how to internet market for people. And there was this big craze about local marketing. And so I went into this whole idea of, oh, I could do your internet marketing for you. Right, guess what I had to do? <laughs> I, was, I was great at web design. I was great at, at designing headlines and how to, how to write great copy. But when it really came down to it, guess what I had to do? I had to actually get on the phone, <laughs> meet with potential clients, sell, right? And guess what happened? That same emotion of doubt creeped in. All right. And then, you know, it, it fast forwarded to just my journey of becoming a healer. And, you know, a lot of people that that are connected to me, they're, they're, would be psychics, would be healers, and they want to start their own businesses as well. And I remember for me, just on my own journey, even just me putting up my Yelp page, my first time Yelp page, that was like such a hurdle to get over. 
And it was because of these doubts over the years. And even on my, my journey as, of becoming a healer and then a spiritual teacher, you know, I tried and tried and I had inter, intermittent results, right? That's the best I could say. At the time, I had some, just these really intermittent results. And part of it was, you know, I had these positive thoughts, right? The thoughts of what I actually want. I was really good at forming these well-formed pictures. If you've ever taken um, NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming, that's part of what they teach in those courses, well-formed pictures. However, as great as those pictures were of what I envisioned my future to be like, I still had these negative emotions, right? These, this frustration, this doubt, even uh, emotions of like in unworthiness. And so, you know, while I had good intentions, while I had great thoughts, when I didn't succeed, right, what got introduced were these thoughts of, uh, now I'm a failure, right? Which then bolstered more of those negative emotions of doubt, unworthiness, can't work, failure. All right, so, you know, just to break that story down a little bit more, I was coupling that, right, those negative emotions with trying to think positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts as the, the, the law of attraction would suggest that you're supposed to do. However, there were still also those thoughts of I'm a failure. I'm a failure, or this is not working. This is not working. Why isn't this working? And also coupling that with stronger and stronger emotions over time of that frustration, that sadness, and even that loss or that lack or, or even just feeling unfulfilled. All right, so just to, to kind of summarize where we're at at this point. Now here we're, we're just going back to the ingredients. So one of the ingredients, of course, is the thought, right? And in this case, you know, I was having this mix of thoughts. You know, my, my, my two friends were also having a mix of thoughts of, I'm in a relationship, but I don't mind, right? That's kind of an interesting emotion about that. Or I want this job, this new job, but uh, nef nothing ever works. Right? So there's some strong emotions there. And when you have these thoughts and you have these emotions over and over and over again, right? what ends up happening here is you actually have what I call a program. You form a program. All right, so think about that for a moment. A thought by itself is just a thought, right? You can have random thoughts, just like I said at the top of the show, but they don't necessarily manifest. And you could also have emotions by themselves, right? Just, oh, I'm, I'm happy. Okay, I'm happy. And the more happy you are, the, the more happiness you attract, of course, right? However, especially when these two are combined, the thought, it's the thought plus the emotion and then you repeat this over and over and over again over time, this thoughts plus emotions plus time, that equals a program. All right, so, you know, the question becomes, you know, when you reflect to your own life, right, and you've had your thoughts of, oh, I want a new job, but it's not working, or I need to be in a, I want to be in a loving relationship, but I feel lonely. Right? And then you repeat these over and over again, and they become the program. You know, what's the nature of the program? And really what it boils down to here, everyone, is are you really making choices about your life? Right? Thinking all these positive thoughts, choosing to make big changes in your life. Is that really a thought or are, are those really choices that you're making? Or are your programs really running the show? And so I want to you know, tell a story, uh, another story about a client of mine. Uh, I'll call her Tracy, just for sake of anonymity here. Um, you know, she was making big changes in her life to be a healer. 
And mind you, she came from the world of corporate, right? So the world of corporate is nice and safe, steady paycheck, right? You go in nine to five and you sit in your, your cubicle, you know, if you're in the corporate world, if that's the reality for you, um, you know, that was the reality for her. And she enjoyed her paycheck. However, she did not enjoy sitting at that cubicle. And so there she was in the transition when she came in to see me. And she says, you know, Joe, I really want to be a healer. I have so much to offer to the world. I have so much to offer my clients. And, you know, when people do get healings from me, they report like just great things, right? Great energies, great insights. And so she loves doing that. However, right, there's the entrepreneurial side of things. And so the thing with entrepreneurs, as, as you might know, is that it's not just the work you do, right? There's the marketing side. There's also the client attraction, the sales calls, the getting on the phone, the Yelp page, just like I mentioned for myself earlier. And so she found it, that side of things, really difficult. All right, so with her... She was thinking positive thoughts, right? I got to, I want to leave corporate. I have a lot, I have a gift to offer the world. And she was imagining that. She was doing all that she was supposed to do, right? However, the reality of it was, oh my gosh, this is taking a long time. And it was going slower than she had anticipated. And unlike, say, what you would watch in the movies or, or on the show, the, or that movie, The Law of Attraction, right? There's all, all these stories like, oh, yeah, it happened overnight. Well, for her, it wasn't happening overnight, right? It's much slower than she had imagined. And just like me, she was also just having intermittent success, all right? So some weeks she'd have a bunch of clients, and then some weeks it was just bone dry. And so she went into this energy of survival, all right, and so that energy of survival, imagine that as an emotion for a moment. And such a low vibration, right? And, you know, you might have heard on my other shows that even when you're, say, in your reading space and you're trying to read clairvoyantly, whenever you're in that, that kind of a low vibration, right, it knocks you out of your psychic space to read. It's just, it's almost impossible to read if you're in any of those kind of lower vibrations. And with her, with Tracy in particular, right, here she's wanting to be a healer. And as a healer, you're supposed to be neutral, right? Um, as a reader, if anything, being in an amusement is a better uh, energy, better emotion to be in. However, when you're in survival, all right, just know that that's pretty much the opposite of being in a place of creation. And so she wasn't creating, right? She wasn't manifesting anything. And so she became frustrated. And then, you know, once she got in that space, all these, uh, these new thoughts, these extra thoughts came up around, well, maybe I won't succeed, all right? Maybe this isn't the right route. Maybe, just maybe I should just go back to corporate or stay in corporate because, you know, this other thing's not working. All right, so, you know, by the time she came to me, she was still so full of possibility, but at the same time, she was really filled with doubt. All right, and those emotions, frustration, doubt, even unworthiness. And, you know, it's no wonder, right, that both me and Tracy, right, didn't succeed in our endeavors when running this kind of program. Or, you know, the question is, did we succeed? Now, I want to just kind of shift gears here a little bit onto why we actually did succeed. And, you know, even though the outcome wasn't what we actually wanted. Here's why we did succeed. And this goes back to the definition of a program. All right, first you have the thought or intention plus some strong emotion and then the repetition over time. That's how I defined a program earlier. And so, you know, here I was, I was 
like, oh, I want to do the or do this healing business. I want to create this healing business. But I had my own doubts, my own failure pictures ever since I was a teenager. All right. And then same with Tracy, right? With her, she also had this emotion of like, gosh, I hate my corporate job. So there's these emotions of hate. There's the emotion of frustration and and you know, just the intermittent success that that just didn't feel good. And then repeat it over time, right? You could see how both of us were running these programs. Now let's look at this from the point of view of the universe, right? Because it's when you're in alignment with the universe, then the universe will deliver what you, you know, what you broadcast out. All right. That's that's also part of the law of attraction. What you broadcast out is what comes back to you. So when you're running these programs, right, if your thoughts are unclear, right, and your emotions are set to a certain vibration, and let's say it's been set to frustration, let's say it's been set to doubt or even unworthiness, and you've been repeating these over and over and over and over again over time, then that program, in a way, it's like this software program, right? That you're saying, hey, universe, here's the program I'm running. Go ahead and, and run this program for me. And then, you know, this is, this is what I'll be expecting to look out for. So guess what? In that case, right, the program was actually succeeding, right? We succeeded in manifesting not having a successful healing business in my case it was not even manifesting being this successful uh inter internet or real estate entrepreneur at the time right so there was success because that program actually became successful and again in my case it was waffling between the thoughts of yes i could do this but no it's not working and my in and that showed up as intermittent results on my entrepreneurial journey and then in Tracy's case, right, with her, it's working at corporate versus not working, right, versus her frustration. And so that came up with in intermittent results. And then earlier, how I mentioned my friend, right, how she wanted this relationship, but she's like, ah, but I don't mind, right? In her case, she got no results. <laughs> she got no results. She's, she's still single. All right. And so in my case, you know, I, I just want to share that trying to be an entrepreneur even since my 20s and finally figuring it out, right? I'm here in my 40s now. And, you know, it's still a process for sure, right? Because it's life, right? There's always the next challenges. There's always in the next stage. And, you know, with Tracy filled with her doubts, her un unworthiness all her life, and it's, it just wasn't in business, right? It's just, it was all her life. And then my friend you know just being lonely right that that feeling of just being lonely so going back to that question right are you really making choices or is the program running the show and are you even aware of what program is running in the first place that you're sending out to the universe all right so back to what I titled the show, right? The key ingredients to manifesting anything. Well, here I am. I'm talking about failures, right? Um, and the program actually, how that program actually did succeed. And, you know, I, I, I also talked about how there's thoughts and it, thoughts and intentions plus the strong emotions plus the repetition over time creates a program. Now, those as you can see, actually are the keys to manifesting, right? Even though, you know, quote unquote, manifested a failure, it still manifested something, all right? So when I say the key to manifesting anything, all right, the key ingredients to manifesting anything, it's not just manifesting the good stuff, it's also how you manifest the things that aren't necessarily favorable, all right? So you could think, for your own world, what have been those rep repetitive thoughts and intentions? Have they been clear? Have you been thinking, oh yes, I want a relationship, but uh, relationships don't work for me. 
And have you had conflicting emotions? Like, oh yeah, if I get that job, it'll feel great. But, oh man, there's this, this emotion of, of doubt and failure. And what have, what have you been repeating in that realm? So in other words, what have you been programming yourself or what have you been programmed for or towards? So you might be thinking, okay, well, I could just go ahead and just reprogram myself. I could build another program, right? I could have, have new thoughts and have new emotions and repeat those over time. So that's all well and good. However, I want to cover a pitfall, all right? There is a pitfall to that, that way of thinking. And in my healing practice, I, I see this all the time. And that is that people are trying to build a new program over an existing program. Or maybe they're, they're just trying to ignore those old programs. Or, you know, they're not even aware that they're running a program in the first place, right? And this happens to a lot of us. We're all just unconscious in a way to, to what's really going on. And the reason why we're unconscious is because when you're in the thick of it, you don't know, right? That's just human nature. And that's why sometimes like you want to talk to your best friend and then your best friend will reflect back something back to you. That's how, you know, we become conscious, right? So, you know, those are some of the pitfalls that we're trying to build this new program over, especially when we're unconscious to even having this old program in the first place. All right, so back to my story about my client Tracy, you know, who had this, this programming of lack, doubt, and unworthiness. You know, here she was, she thought, if only she could just change her thoughts, she could change her life. Well, when she moved into that new phase of life, she was still running those old programs, Right, so underneath, subconsciously, if those programs are still there, can you see why she was getting the results? Right, what she manifested, and with her, the the what she manifested was these intermittent successes. Right, nothing sustainable, nothing where she can grow. And in my case, you know, this whole I'm a failure with these old programs still running the show. Right? That's, that's what I you know, found for myself that I was unconscious to, this whole picture of unworthiness. So here's, going back to the ingredients, here's what's key if you want to get to that next stage. It helps to deprogram those old programs out of your system. All right, so as much as you can program in your body, in your space, your aura, you can deprogram. So back to to Tracy, my client Tracy, I I did this reading on her, right? And, you know, what what came up, I, I, you know, I had my eyes closed and I was just kind of doing a scan of her space. And what showed up was there's this energy in her heart chakra. And in her heart chakra, it showed up as like this black kind of energy. And what I got from, you know, when I just kind of looked at the energy of that for her, I got there's, there was something about where she gave love, but love was not returned. And then I kind of looked at her timeline and I saw that this energy came from her childhood. And it, it looked to me, it appeared to me like when she was five years old, roundabout. And she just popped up, right? She said, oh my gosh, no wonder. You know, she, she thought, this is what she would love to do, this new job. But because of this childhood program, right, this this whole thing about love and love not returned, it kind of manifested itself into how her life played out. And I remember her saying, she's like, oh my God, that makes total sense because when when she was five years old, that was when her parents separated and divorced. Right. So she was still too young, right, to really remember what was going on, but the energy of it stayed with her. And so I gave her a healing, you know, I gave her healing and just the energy tools that I used when I work with my clients. I I 
I use that to move that energy out. Or in other words, I, I deprogrammed that energy out. All right. And just another story, you know, um, I had this uh, client, Jane, and you know, she was trying to find a new job for months and she hated her current job and she couldn't seem to find anything. And so there she goes with that thought, uh, I can't find anything, but I got to get out of here. <laughs> Compared, coupled with the emotion, right, of hate, right, I hate my job, like she just really hated, she was frustrated. Um, and so she was sending out, right, this, these thoughts, these intentions, while well, she was very clear, like, oh, uh, she wanted to get out of her job, but she also had these other thoughts of, like, I can't find anything, coupled with that strong emotion of hate, and she just kept repeating this over and over again for, like, she couldn't find a job for months, right? So that, that was her program. And, of course, she manifested not finding a job. And so when I did a reading on her, I, I looked at her third chakra and, and, and I found like her current boss's energy was in her third chakra. And, you know, the third chakra is about control and power and, and, and uh, self-empowerment. Like that's the purpose and function of the third chakra. And that her boss's energy was in there, the, the boss that she had this conflict with. Um, you know, it's no wonder right? And what, what ended up happening with that energy was it actually triggered this energy from her family in general. And what I saw for her was it was this kind of generational kind of energy that even that had a, a like a past life quality to it. And it was interesting because, you know, it had to do with like her role, the role of females in her family and, you know, she came from a traditional kind of family that women shouldn't work and they should take care of the kids, like this old kind of family programming. And it was that energy of resentment, especially against authority, that she fought against her whole life, right? And that was actually her program that I saw in her third chakra, so here she is trying to manifest this new job, but she had this energy from her boss, right? And authority, right? And, you know, which caused this emotion, this, this deep kind of emotion. And so it was no wonder she couldn't manifest this new job, right? So, you know, I did this similar healing work for her to clear, deprogram the energies out of that third chakra. And, you know, for both of them, what, what, what I end up seeing clairvoyantly when all that energy is moved out, Right, so what might be a black or a dark gray or even like a static kind of energy is a lot of times what I'll see. When that's moved out in, with the healing work, right, then often I see it just a light, nice light, bright color. And you know, often what clients will report is like, oh, I, it just feels lighter now, right? So what I see is validated by how they feel as a result. So to sum up so far, right, how the program was built, right, thoughts and intentions, put strong emotions and re repetition over time. And, you know, how if you're sending this program of unclear thoughts, negative emotions, well, guess what? The universe is like, okay, if that's the program you're sending, then that's what I'll deliver to you. And we also covered how, well, rather than trying to build a new program on top of an old program, it's better to deprogram first to create a clean slate. So with that, the question becomes, what does it really take to manifest what you actually do want, right? So I started off how you can manifest literally anything. And so far in the show, I've given examples of how you can manifest things like failure and things not working. So let, let's, flip that around now and let's take all of that and here are the keys right and I have five keys here to really manifesting what you want and you know keys to success right and so the first step really is to be clear on your intention all right really sink deep into what you really do want Make that really clear. There's no waffling back and forth. 
right? So if you want the new job, be clear on what that job would be like. What, are you, what will your new boss be like? What will your relationships with your coworkers be like? Be clear on that. And then clear away, right? Part of being clear is clearing away any of those other thoughts, right? So if there's thoughts of I'm a failure or any of that, just clear that away for now. And also be really clear that you're really aligned body, mind, and soul, right? So your body has to feel clear about it, your mind. And just is it in alignment with your soul's purpose? Be clear on that. And also be clear that you have pure intentions, right? So in other words, not be muddled, not be jumbled. And don't just be in that space of moving away from something, right? Because whatever you're moving away from, if you're moving away from that old job, well, guess what? That's still entertained in your thoughts. So I would suggest be really clear on what you're moving towards, so that's, that's step number one. Step two, with a sense of compassion for yourself, all right, really take stock of what your programs are that are no longer in alignment with these new clear intentions. All right, and notice I, I said compassion. And you know, with compassion, that's a different kind of emotion now you're introducing a new elevated kind of emotion compared to say fear, unworthiness, or doubt. And with, from that place of compassion, you could ask yourself, okay, what really has been running the show? Right, get real. Were you really making choices as you might've thought or was the program running the show? Right? And again, come from a place of compassion. It's so easy for us to, to like beat ourselves up. And you know, you've been beating yourself up for a long time now. And how's that really been working for you? All right, so one way you can shift that is to really come from a place of compassion now. All right? You do it with your friends all the time. Why not, why not for yourself? All right? So just really see what's been running the show with these programs, with their with their dominant thoughts, with their dominant emotions, et cetera, et cetera. Step number three, all right? So step one, be clear. Step two, have a sense of compassion to just kind of review what's going on. And then once you get a sense of, okay, what are those programs, then you know what to deprogram, all right? And this is the, actually the hardest part. And the reason why deprogramming is the hardest part is because, and I, I introduce this at the top of the show is that many times it can be impossible to, to really see your own blind spots, especially if you're in the thick of things, right? It's hard to really see like, oh, this is, this is what's been going on, right? For you, everything's just been normal. And so sometimes it is hard to see our blind spots. And on top of that, you know, even if you were aware of your blind spots, then what, right? So those blind spots, you know, often we can get triggered. It's like, oh man, why didn't I see that? And then what ends up, what people end up doing is that they try to force it out or use more force, you know? However, in order to deprogram, you actually must become a whole different energy altogether, All right? And you've heard the saying, like you can't fight hate with more hate right? That just brings about more hate, right? So I see this all the time. And, you know, when, when my clients do come to me, it's like, I've tried and tried to get more frustrated and more frustrated. Well, that, that emotion is just helping to reinforce that program more and more. So what I suggest is what if instead you were to just come from a place of love instead, love, joy, peace, which over time, right, what's, what'll be the result of that if you could come from an elevated kind of emotion versus some of these negative emotions? And, you know, the way you could deprogram, um, you know, once you do get to this point is you can, do, you know, meditate, 
meditating, of course, is is great because it helps to, you know, you can release things out into the field. You could be at that place of nothing. Or, you know, if you know of a more active meditation, like I teach in my school, you could just kind of transmute that energy. Or, you know, my favorite uh, way, of course, of deep programming is you could work with a healer or, or, or even a therapist that can help you with that. Okay, just to move all these energies out, literally com- creating that clean slate. And keep in mind, you know, when it comes to deprogramming, it took a whole lifetime for you to build these programs, right? It might have even been a result of um, past lives, right? So it's not enough to, you know, just know, right? Know about these, just knowing about your programs. You actually have to do the work to actually move move them out and be at peace with it and in the process keep in mind to just be gentle with with yourself versus being frustrated and if all else fails about deprogramming you know what if you were to just leave it up to the source you know as if to say hey god you know it's in your hands i don't know what else to do just just this is it's all it's all for you now to handle and you know how many times in your own life were you at the brink of giving up just letting it all go. And then next thing you know, that's when the miracles happened, right? So that's an example of deprogramming right there. So that's step number three. Now it's step number four. Once you have this clean slate, then this is a prime opportunity to reprogram, right? So going back to those clear thoughts, clear intentions, then you could couple these clear thoughts, uh, intentions, couple that with these elevated emotions now of love, gratitude, thankfulness, joy, peace, you name it, right? And just really feel that as if it's already happened, right? And you probably hear, heard this all the time, right? Imagine your future as, a, as if it already happened. And it sounds really cliche, but how many of you have actually practiced that, all right? And not just from a place of knowing about it, but actually really feeling it in your heart. And the more you repeat this over time, right, because that was one of the ingredients to manifesting is repeating. And then that's when things will start to come to you. And I just want to emphasize that really no one can do this but you. You have to make that choice. And maybe you need some support around that. But that's, you have to repeat that. So you could install this new program as if you're saying to the universe, okay, universe, this is the new program I'm running. And then the last step, step five. So let me just review here. Step one, be clear. Step two, with a sense of compassion of yourself, take stock of your current programs. Step three, deprogram those out and work with a healer, you know, meditate. And then step four, once you have a clean slate, you can reprogram. And then step five, step five is to pay attention. All right, so when you're really clear with what, what you want, the universe delivers, right? And especially if it's consistently, especially with these elevated emotions coupled with those thoughts, that's when the universe delivers. So when that happens, really watch out for the signs. You have to watch out, right? And so think about it. It already did deliver for you what you are broadcasting out with those negative emotions and unclear thoughts, and you're paying attention to that. So imagine what the universe will do for you when you broadcast clear thoughts and clear elevated emotions repetitively over time, right? And another thing to pay attention to is watch out for when your energy dips. So you did all that deprogramming of years and years of old programs. However, reprogramming takes time and patience over well, uh, as well. All right, so the, re- the universe will reward you for your efforts, for your clear intentions, your clear emotions over time. And you know, you do have a choice of what you want to think and how you want to feel. And again, when you start to manifest all that, just like repeated frustrations, well, guess what? Repeated successes will help you to manifest even more good thoughts, more good feelings, more even more manifesting of things greater than you could even imagine. You know, some call that ser- serendipity, right? The right thing, the right time. Some call it synchronicity. 
you know, for me, I actually call it just being magical, right? And I call it becoming mystical, right? Because it's all that energy into form. All that for me is very mystical. All right, so we're at that point in the show here. I'm just, just going to summarize, you know, speaking of becoming mystical, right, and playing with the energy of, of what it takes to manifest. You know, I, I spoke about how we built programs over time and we program ourselves or we've been programmed as a result of the repetition of the consistent thoughts we've had, whether they're clear or not clear, the consistent emotions we've had, whether those are jumbled, high emotions or, or low emotions. And then we talked about how repeated over time, it can become a program. And we also covered how if you can program yourself, you certainly can deprogram yourself and then reprogram yourself. And also, as mentioned, you know, there's certainly challenges and many do try to do this all alone. However, what most don't realize is that they're blind to their own blind spots. That's what they don't know that they don't even know. And they're often trying to use some other force or other negative emotion to replace this other negative emotion. And that doesn't work. You just manifest more of the negative. And then the challenge over time is just keeping up. Even if you do reprogram, it's keeping up that momentum to make sure you don't fall back into old challenges and patterns where you might feel like you're not resourceful enough along, along your journey. And all these things keep you from becoming mystical. All right, well, you know, if that's the case for you, that's where I come in. And that's where I come into the, the picture as a healer and a coach. And, you know, if you are still stuck, right, still running these old programs for ages or even lifetimes, and if you are unable to overcome these blocks to your true destiny, or if you've been even just blocked even in, in the slightest way, right, where you've only had intermittent success, thus experiencing more of that frustration, well, this is where I offer, offer this healing for you. And if, if you want to overcome those blocks, if you need that help with, with even identifying those to, and then to deprogram those out and then to reprogram, um, I offer what's called a deep, deep transformation life path healing, where not only do you, like I said, deprogram these old thoughts, beliefs, you also walk away with a new sense of purpose and an updated program more in alignment with your soul's purpose that you can broadcast out to the universe. And then as well, I'm actually launching this brand new program, this brand new coaching program um, called Becoming Mystical, where you can not only learn about your old programs, deprogram the, those out, but also over time, right? It's not like this, this stuff open, happens overnight, right? You need that support over time so that you don't dip back down into those old ways. And you could also have that continued support to manifest your dreams, have continued access to that pure potentiality of what the universe can actually deliver back to you. All right, so all those you can find on my website. And my website is www.trueinsights.net. And whether you want to schedule a healing or schedule a breakthrough call with me for you know to find out more about this coaching program, that's where you can find me, www.trueinsights.net. And you know, the last thing I want to leave you all with is to, you know, don't stay stuck. Right? You've been stuck for far too long. And if anything resonated with you at all today, you know, take action, all right? And again, if you wanna reach out to me, find me at trueinsights.net, or you could just go to the, my, my show page here on newsforthesoul.com and just look for my show, True Insights with Joe Gokoskis. And you know, I'd love for, to, for you to connect with me and, and you know, let's, let's deprogram and reprogram your life. All right, so with that, I just want to thank everyone. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Visit again next week and every Wednesday at 1 p.m. here on newsforthesoul.com. This was Joe Gukoskis with True Insights with Joe Gukoskis, and thank you again. Blessings to you all. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.